applause for one coronavirus sufferer as he leaves intensive care for the last time and leaves behind the greatest physical struggle of his life. The difficulties were extreme. You know, when you, <clears throat> when you go a cough, the natural bodily function is to try to refill the lungs with the air that you've just put out. And if you can't do that, and that's something you've taken for granted every day of your life, it's very scary very quickly. Hilton was right to be scared, as the limited data we have on ICU shows. Patients like him, who go on a ventilator in the first 24 hours, have a survival rate of no more than 32%. Patients who don't, like, we're told, Boris Johnson, survive at least 83% of the time. Although many end up on a ventilator, often for days or more. After sort of four days of this, you do begin to doubt whether you can go on, you know, how much longer you can take it. Here I am, and I'm seeing the world again through the eyes of a child, and I see how beautiful everything is, how amazing everything is, and I'm just blown away by being here. This reconstruction of a survivor's lung shows why coronavirus is so dangerous. The green areas are where the virus has damaged lung tissue. In ICUs, this can often lead to a knock-on effect, as the body's immune system overreacts, shifting the damage to other organs. You're giving fluids, nutrition, trying to prevent secondary complications like new infections, pressure sores. So there's a whole package of care that needs to be delivered to try and obviously help the patient get over their primary condition. So in this case, lung failure, respiratory failure, but also to try and prevent this domino effect of other organs being compromised. This vast tank of liquid oxygen was delivered today to the new Nightingale Hospital in London. Patients in ICUs share a desperate need for air, but also another factor about which we know very little. What you're seeing with COVID is that of the people who need to go to intensive care, those who get critically ill, around 75% of them uh, are men. Uh, and it's particularly true when you look at some of the older groups, over 40, that it's really predominantly men uh, who are affected. And I think it's really important to say that people don't yet know why. A disease that strikes us via our own immune system could be said to have done the same to our political system. Attacking the head of the very government we elected to protect us. Not because of who he is, but because... He's human. Roland Manthorpe, Sky News.